Next speaker is Dr. Vivek Dave, who will be talking on comparative outcomes in endophthalmitis caused by biofilm positive and biofilm negative bacteria. Dr. Vivek Dave, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope my slides are visible and that uh, I am audible clearly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, I would start off with my presentation titled uh, Prospective Comparison of uh, Clinical Microbiologic Features and Management Outcomes in Infectious Endophthalmitis Caused by Biofilm Positive and Biofilm Negative Organisms. Uh, my AIS number is as mentioned and I have no uh, financial disclosures. So currently the standard of care in endophthalmitis management remains uh, intravital antibiotics, but uh, various studies are showing an increasing resistance developing to the commonly used antibiotics. Whether biofilm formation plays a role in increasing antimicrobial resistance or reducing overall clinical prognosis is not clearly known currently. So what is a biofilm? So this is an ancient ubiquitous life form that is characterized by cells attached to a living surface embedded in an extracellular polymeric substance produced by these microorganisms. This has been shown in various systemic disease studies to increase uh, the bacterial survival and also provide a protection against the negative environment and resistance to the antibiotics. So in this study, we aimed at comparing the presentation of eyes infected with biofilm positive and biofilm negative organisms, and also compare their anatomic and functional outcome. A good functional outcome was defined as uh, visual acuity achieved more than 20 by 200 at the last visit at resolution of endophthalmitis in par with our previous endophthalmitis studies. And a good anatomic outcome was defined as uh, absence of retinal detachment, absence of hypotony and structural integrity of the eyeball at the end of follow-up. This was a prospective, non-randomized, comparative, consecutive case series. We recruited uh, 83 eyes with endophthalmitis, of which 50 had no biofilm formation, whereas 33 biofilm formation was detected by crystal violet plate method. The treating physician in the clinic was masked to the biofilm formation results, and all cases were managed as per standard institute management protocol already proven in literature. The statistics were done on the Medcal statistical software, Paired t-test was used for comparison of normative data, and man whitney u was used for comparison of non-normative data. Multivariate logistic regression analysis and appropriate odds ratio were reported. This was done to assess the effect of various demographic and clinical factors on the anatomic and functional outcome. A p-value of less than 0.05 was assigned as statistically significant. If you look at the results table, the standout features were that the biofilm negative group required much lesser mean number of surgical interventions as compared to the biofilm positive group. And also the final logmar visual acuity, the final functional success and the final anatomic success was much better in the biofilm negative group as compared to the biofilm positive group. If we look across etiologies, the spread of various etiologies causing endophthalmia across the two groups. If we also look at the commonly used antibiotics and their resistance, this again was comparable across the two groups. To finally find if any of these factors had any bearing whatsoever on the outcome, a detailed multivariate logistic regression analysis was done both for the functional and the anatomic outcomes using all possible parameters that could have influenced the outcome. And we saw that none of the other demographic or clinical factors had any bearing on the outcome whatsoever. Thus, in conclusion, we saw that biofilm formation could occur in the clinical setting of endophthalmitis. When affected by organisms that form biofilm, the anatomic and functional outcome is worse. As overall antibiotic resistance and other clinical factors were comparable, the increased virulence could be hypothesized to be due to the physical barrier effect of the biofilm to the antibiotics. Thank you. I just want to ask you, what are the organisms who are biofilm positive and what are the organisms which are biofilm negative? Uh, in the current study, we found uh, the biofilm positivity and negativity across uh, the varied organisms that we usually get in endophthalmitis. So our results showed the presence of uh, streptococci, staphylococci, uh, pseudomonas, uh, Escherichia coli, and uh, sternotrophomonas as uh, the commonest organisms uh, forming biofilm across both the groups. 
I, uh, I have just a question. Um, I mean, there's a broad spectrum of bacteria which is causing biofilm. So in the same um, uh, organism, with the same organism, did you see a biofilm positive and biofilm negative uh, uh, as well? Or is it all these organisms just always produce? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, we found a similar organism on in both the groups. So what uh, we hypothesize this as an interference, as an inference is uh, that possibly there are different strains of the same organism. So there could be a pseudomonas which is not biofilm positive. There could also be a pseudomonas strain which is biofilm positive. So the same organism could manifest in different ways. I think this possibly is also in sync with the, uh, with the clinical observation that sometimes we do find pseudomonas in our culture or our smear, uh, you know, indicating that it's a virulent organism, but the clinical course seems to be you know, comparatively favorable. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Lahiri, you're not uh, audible. Thank you. Uh, your study is very good, but uh, I wanted to ask you, apart from prognostication, does it help any way in the treatment of these patients? Right. So that is the next step that we are looking at. This was basically a pilot concept understanding as to whether biofilm formation occurs in the cases that we see and would it have any bearing on the clinical outcome. So going ahead, we are attempting to you know, work uh, with industry or the non-medical fraternity to try and see if we can come out with some sort of a diagnostic or some sort of uh, uh, you know, kit wherein one can quickly pick up uh, as to whether the organism that is infecting a particular case is a biofilm producing one or not. And based on that, uh, we would then look at uh, seeing whether immediate aggressive vitrectomy or maximum possible management in these cases gives a relatively better outcome. Okay. Okay. I think it's a very good study, Vivek, because we are getting more and more resistant bacteria nowadays in our end of, you know, and we don't know what's happening. So I think this might be one of the reasons, you know, along with obviously bacterial mm -hmm. resistance, you know. So very nice. Right, Dr. Great yeah, job. Thanks, thank you. Thank you.